it was very saddening to see that the conditions and lives of the people that President Museveni has been seeing as he does his so-called great trek has not changed much. The impact of leadership should be seen on the people you lead, not just on yourself. If you became a leader when people are sleeping on mats, they should at least upgrade to a mattress and later to a bed. If you came to leadership when people are having bicycle border borders, people should at least now upgrade to motorcycles. If you came to leadership when the biggest garden was half an acre, at least they should upgrade to an acre or more. Unfortunately, our concept of leadership is distorted by our people also. People ask, what has changed about you? Which reminds me of a story I was told, I don't know whether it is true or false, that when President Kagame visited the exiled king of Rwanda, King Kigeri, and you know, the exiled king is quite a hefty man, he's big. So, the king reportedly looked at the president of Rwanda and asked him, how are my people? The president said, the people are fine. And the king asked, do they have enough to eat? And the president said, yes. Then the king asked, but if you, the president, you are so skinny, I wonder how my people are doing. We have got to create a balance between what is good for our people and what is good for us. In Uganda, we have got a lot of this politics of Aina Keye Kolede. Some of us are big victims of that, even in my constituency. Because I'm not so materialistic, I'm not always rushing for owning this hotel, owning apartment. So people then come to you and say, but you have done nothing for yourself. My only answer to them always is, how many apartments did Jesus leave behind? Is there even any road named after him? Even the road near Christ the King is not named Jesus Christ Road. I think it is uh, named after some colonialist. So, as the Democratic Party, we insist that Museveni's check to the people of Uganda has bounced. His time in power will be remembered as a time of broken promises. He's now having conversations about whether parents should contribute to UPE or not. We need a government which is run based on policy. The current NRM government is just run on improvisation. Every day you improvise. Kuyiya. You, you can't run a government like that. There must be a, a clear doctrine on how a government is supposed to be run. I totally disagree with the idea of the president having approved the policy of UPE. Now he says they are now consulting again. So he has asked the minister of local government to convene meetings in every village of Uganda so that the villagers themselves can decide as to whether the parents should contribute or not.
We expect the government to offer leadership. So I hope the president will continue with his walk of shame because I see wherever he's going, he's apologizing to the people. Because the lives of the people have not changed. Go to Luero District Local Government. The Luero District Headquarters is like a cattle shed. That is the so-called Maka. The roads are not well done. The services in Luero are among the poorest. Even the poverty map shows Luero to be among the poorest districts. So, it has now been from a fundamental change to a fundamental shame. As the Democratic Party, we call upon the Uganda people, our fellow citizens, to judge Museveni, not on the basis of what we tell them, but on the basis of his own promises. There's, there's no need for Ugandans to listen to me before judging Museveni. They just need to remember what he has promised. Then they can find out whether he is an asset or a liability. I believe very strongly that this may be the last walk. I'm not a prophet of doom, but I think he is making a farewell walk to the people. Therefore, it places a lot of responsibility on Ugandans of sound mind to start reflecting and thinking about the post Museveni Uganda. The easier part is removing Museveni. Dictators have been removed. The Soviet tyranny was removed. Now we have Putin. I don't know whether the Russians are happier with Putin. Bashir is gone in Sudan. Mubarak is gone. Ben Ali is gone in Tunisia. Mugabe is gone. So, for some of us who God has given the gift of discernment, we got a good education, we love our country, we are also privileged to be running credible organizations like the Democratic Party. We think this year, rather than investing in that propaganda work, we need to start a conversation about rebooting our country. What will happen after M7? Some of you think in simplistic ways and you say, the army will step in. Let me tell you, no army is prepared to run a country. Never. Even if the army takes over a country, they will still need political leaders who have principle, but above all, who are ready and who have the experience to run a country. The army overthrew Mugabe, but eventually they needed others. In Sudan, that is the same case. So we hope President Museveni will return from his walk and start talking about his legacy. How does he want to be remembered? I call upon President Museveni to rename that walk to his legacy walk. He must remember what inspired him to pick up arms and go and fight. I don't think many of the Bush War comrades want medals and monuments. They had a cause. Actually, the, the way President Museveni is conducting himself these days is a scandal. It's a, it's a real embarrassment to those historicals who died. How many envelopes did he distribute in Luero Triangle to get people to volunteer to fight? How much money did he carry in sacks to mobilize people to fight? 
people fought because he declared a compelling vision of ushering in fundamental change in the country, which, as you can see, is in the 10 points program. So, the only way is for him to go back to why he started the work. This work which is going on is a commemoration of the work. In the same way that Christians do the way of the cross. Nobody gets crucified after the, the walk during the, the, the way of the cross. But you, you participate in the way of the cross to remind yourself of your value in the eyes of God. That I am so valuable that this kind of sacrifice can be done in my name. So I hope in his head this should be his way of the cross. So, in the way of the cross, you go back to the original principles. So, the only salute he can give to his fallen comrades is to go back to the core principles of why he started the NRM. And you remember point number one on the 10-point program is democracy. It is not Entebbe Expressway. It is not the, the, the ginger source of the Nile Bridge, it is not the roads, it is not Nalubale, it is not these dams. Point number one is democracy. And that is why he went to the bush. But now he's saying Sijui Pan-Africanism and he's not even practicing it well with his very own neighbors. If you can't love Rwanda, will you love Morocco, which is at the other end? The Bible says if you can't love your neighbor, then how can you love God who you have never even seen? So, he should stop hypocrisy. He should, he should, that, that should be the work. And I've compared it with the way of the cross. The, the state house is not a parking space. There must be mobility in state house. People must come and go. That's why they put term limits in the constitution.